two other important families of curves that we'll encounter when working with polar coordinates are the families of rose curves. We've already seen an example with uh, r equals cosine 2 theta, which um, turned out to be this curve here. Um, they come in the form r equals a sine n theta, r equals a cosine n theta, where n is um, going to be an integer. And depending on whether n is um, even or odd, it's going to determine how many petals it has. For example, um, when we looked at cosine of 2 theta, we ended up with 4 petals. When we, if we were to go through and graph cosine of 3 theta, we would see that we have 3 petals. 4 theta gives us 8 petals, 5 theta gives us 5 petals. So, as it turns out, when n is even, we're going to have double the number of petals as the number n. When n is odd, we'll have the same number of petals. The other um, determining factor in how the graph is going to look is whether it's sine or cosine. As usual, cosine is symmetric across the x-axis. The sine roses are symmetric across the y-axis. Another group of um, curves or family of curves are some families of spirals. Um, we've already seen the spiral r equals theta. If we multiply theta by a constant a, again we get a spiral, it's just that r is stretched a bit. Um, there's what they call a parabolic spiral. Um, r equals a times the square root of theta and the logarithmic spiral, r equals a times e to the b theta. There's the lattice spiral, which is kind of strange because at one point it just kind of flattens out, and that's r equals a divided by the square root of theta, and the hyperbolic spiral, r equals a over theta. We don't come across these as frequently as we do the um, cardioids limicons, roses and um, lemnus gates. Next we're going to take a quick look at example 9 from your textbook. It asks us to sketch the graph of r squared equals 4 cosine 2 theta in polar coordinates. Now, the first thing that they note in this, the solution to this example is that this equation does not express r as a function of theta. In other words, if you try to solve for r in terms of theta, you get a plus or minus because of the squared. So r is actually equal to 2 times the square root of cosine 2 theta and negative 2 times the square root of cosine 2 theta. So to get the graph, we're going to need to graph both parts. The next thing that they observe in your textbook, and I'm going to leave for you to confirm, is that the graph is symmetric about both the x and y axis. And you can um, confirm this again by replacing theta with negative theta and simplifying, or also replacing theta by pi minus theta and simplifying to see that it has both kinds of symmetry. So what that means is that if we can determine the uh, symmetry in the first, or rather the graph's shape in the first quadrant, then using symmetry we can get all four quadrants. Now to begin th to get that shape, we need to look at the rectangular coordinate version of r equals 2 times the square root of cosine of 2 theta. That is graphed here in the lower left portion of your screen. Um, as you can see, there are gaps because cosine is negative, cosine of 2 theta rather, is negative between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4, so we have no values on those intervals. On the interval from 0 to pi over 4, the radius is going to range from 2 down to 0, and we see that graphed in polar coordinates here. So in the sector of angles from 0 to pi over 4, we see that the radius starts at 2 and goes inward to 0. Now, using the symmetry, we reflect that into all four of the quadrants, and we have this little propeller-looking 
object here. This is called a lemnus gate. Now remember we've only graphed part of r. We didn't graph negative 2 square root of cosine of 2 theta, but if you were to repeat the procedure for that, you'd find that you just end up retracing this shape here. Now we won't always be able to identify a curve in polar coordinates just by matching it to one of the common families of polar curves. Another technique for identifying what a curve is going to look like is to transform it from its polar equation to rectangular coordinates and hope that it matches a familiar curve in rectangular coordinates. So for example, in part A, we're going to look at the equation r equals 5 secant theta. Now when we're doing this, we want to always keep in the back of our minds the various relationships between r theta and x, y. Meaning we want to remember x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and the tangent of theta equals y over x. Now one thing that I noticed here is that um, I have a secant rather than a sine or a cosine. So I'm going to go ahead and um, first of all use the identity that secant is 1 over cosine. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by cosine to have r cosine theta equals 5. And now this left side actually matches one of our identities exactly. So x is equal to r cosine theta is plugged in and we get x equals 5. So the equation r equals 5 secant theta when graphed in the polar coordinate system would be the same as the graph x equals 5, a vertical line, when graphed in the rectangular coordinate system. Part B, let's look at r equals 2 sine theta. Okay, well, I see that I have a sine theta, which is nice, but it has to be multiplied by r. Dividing the r over won't work, because then I'll just have 1 over r times sine of theta. So another possible technique is to multiply both sides by r to get the r that I needed on the right. Now when we do this, we get r squared on the left, which we know is equal to x squared plus y squared. And on the right, we get 2r sine theta, which is 2 times y. Now hopefully you recall from precalculus that this is the shape of um, a circle. In case you have trouble remembering the equations of your conic sections, they've been provided for you in your ANGEL, um, your lecture note section of ANGEL. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is part C. We're going to look at r equals 4 cosine of theta plus 4 sine of theta. And again, notice we have cosine and sine, but no r in front of them. Now there are a couple of techniques we could use. Um, one technique is to square both sides in order to get an r squared, but it's much easier to multiply, in this case, both sides through by r. That way we have our r cosine theta and r sine theta, and also, again on the left, we have r squared. So we get x squared plus y squared equals 4x plus 4y, which means x squared minus 4x plus y squared minus 4y is equal to 0, which again is a circle. So here we had a line, here we have a circle, here we have another circle. All right, part D. Let's look at r equals the secant of theta times the tangent of theta. 
All right, so one of the things that I notice here is um, secant of theta is not real useful to me. There's no secant of theta in my uh, four rules. So I'm going to rewrite it as one over cosine of theta. Now tangent of theta, that can be replaced with y over x, so that's useful to me. And then um, I can always move the cosine over to the other side. So we have r cosine theta equals y over x, which would mean that x equals y over x. Multiplying both sides by x, but keeping in mind the restriction that x cannot equal zero, we get y equals x squared as long as x does not equal zero. So this is going to be a parabola with a point missing. So again, common shapes, but the, the functions written in polar coordinates were not as familiar to us, so by converting to rectangular coordinates, they become more recognizable. Now just as it was useful to convert from polar to rectangular in order to identify a curve, it'll frequently be useful to convert from rectangular to polar in order to perform certain calculations on a function. Um, we'll see a lot of that in Calc 3 when we're um, finding certain volumes and other values using integration. So in this example, we're going to express the given equations in polar coordinates. In part A, we're going to start with y equals negative 3. Again, we're going to keep in mind that x is, by definition, r cosine theta, y is r sine theta, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and tangent of theta equals y over x. So it's all we are saying is to get rid of any x's and y's and put in r's and thetas instead. So in this case, we're just going to replace the y with r sine theta. So we have r sine theta equals negative 3. We were not asked to identify the shape, but we know that y equals negative 3 is, in fact, a horizontal line. Part b, we're given x squared plus y squared equals 5. Well, in this case, we know that x squared plus y squared is just r squared. So r squared is equal to 5. Now, it's worth noting that in polar coordinates, we can solve for r equals plus or minus the square root of 5 and simplify that to just the square root of 5 because any point that has a radius of negative square root of 5 can also be written as a pair of coordinates with a radius of positive square root of 5. And we should be able to recognize at this point that both this equation and this equation give a circle. So it makes sense that they're the same. Part C, x squared plus y squared plus 4x equals 0. All right, you should be able to recognize that that is a circle, but um, our goal here is to convert it to polar. So replacing x squared and y squared with r squared and replacing x with r cosine theta, we now have an equation in terms of r's and thetas. Now we could simplify that. r squared would then be negative 4 r cosine theta. And dividing by r, r would, which can never be 0 by the way, so we can divide through by it r would be equal to negative 4 cosine of theta, which is probably more recognizable to us as a circle, but either solution is technically correct. Part d, we have x squared times x squared plus y squared is equal to y squared. Well, x squared would be the same as saying r cosine squared, or rather, r squared cosine squared theta x squared plus y squared is r squared, and y squared would be r sine theta squared, or r squared sine squared theta. Well, a pair of r squareds cancels out, leaving us with r squared cosine squared theta equals sine squared theta. 
And one option that we have here is to um, simplify by taking the square, or rather dividing through by cosine squared. We could also just leave it in the form that it's in here. Let's see what happens when we divide by cosine squared. We're going to get r squared equals tangent squared theta. Now, we could take the square root of both sides, and we would have r is equal to the tangent of theta, but we'd have to be careful here. That would be the absolute value of the tangent of theta.